Hey, how's it going? In this video, I want to help you find the value of different trigonometric functions using only a single point. So in a previous video, we worked on how to just sketch out uh, an angle if you are given a point. This takes it a little bit further actually finding those different trigonometric values. Now, there's a bit of a process to this, but the first part of it is really just sketching out that angle. So finding the point and, of course, making a ray that goes through it. Now, once we have that, we'll be able to form a nice right triangle, and this will be with respect to the x-axis. Uh, definitely keep that in mind uh, so you know where to put that triangle uh, in the coordinate system. Now, once we have our right triangle, then we can go ahead and use the definition of each of our trigonometric functions to go ahead and make the proper ratios. As a quick example of this, uh, something like sine of the angle is simply equal to the opposite side over the hypotenuse. Now, if you're not familiar with the definitions, definitely check out my other video where I go over those definitions. Uh, that way you are well prepared. Okay, now that that's out of the way, let's go ahead and see an example. So the first part of this is we really just want to sketch out where this point is uh, so that we can better see our angle. So here I'm going to start off with the point 6, 8. So we want to think of going 6 in the x direction, then 8 up. There we go. So that is my point. All right now that we have our point, we can go ahead and draw a ray starting at the origin right through that little point. Done. So now that we have our uh, angle essentially sketched out, you can almost imagine that angle uh, if the beginning side's right here on the x-axis and this is the terminal. Um, now we want to see what is the right triangle hiding in the background. So from this point, you want to see how it connects to the x-axis. So I'm just going to draw this out here. And you can see there's my right triangle. Nice. And with that right triangle, we can start identifying some of the sides. This side along the x-axis will, of course, be our x value here. So this is 6 long. Our y value will be this side, so 8. And it looks like we got to do just a little bit of work to go ahead and figure out what our hypotenuse is. Um, probably the quickest way to do this is to just run through a quick calculation of the Pythagorean theorem. So 6 squared plus 8 squared is equal to our hypotenuse squared. Let's call that r. And let's see what we get. So 36 plus 64 equals r squared. 100 equals r squared. Or just 10 equals r. All right. So now that we have all of the sides of this triangle, we can really move on to find those trigonometric functions, or at least their values. Our reference angle is also in reference to the uh, x-axis, so we'll be using that uh, into our trigonometric functions. We'll start off with the first big three, sine, cosine, and tangent. For sine, we want to think of the opposite side over the hypotenuse, so we get 8 tenths. And even though technically that is the value, probably not a bad idea to reduce this thing, uh, we'll call this 4 fifths. So dividing the top and bottom by 2. For cosine, we want to take the adjacent side divided by the hypotenuse, so that's 6 divided by 10. And like before, we'll go ahead and reduce this, 3 fifths. And one last one to go, uh, tangent will be our opposite side over our adjacent side, 8 sixths, and that reduces to 4 thirds. Now it's definitely good to start off with these uh, first three here, the sine, cosine, and tangent, because as soon as you have them, you can uh, write down the next three by simply taking the reciprocal. So let's go ahead and write down the next big three, so cosecant, secant, and cotangent. Now these, of course, also have corresponding definitions, like cosecant is the hypotenuse over the opposite, but as long as you know that they're connected to the original three, then you actually just take the first three and flip them. So 5 fourths is the reciprocal of sine, uh, 5 thirds is the reciprocal of cosine, and 3 fourths is the reciprocal of tangent, and now I have all six trigonometric functions. Now we'll give this another go with a, another point, just so you can see how this process works out. And we'll do one that's a little bit more difficult. All right, so the first part of this, we need to sketch out the, what that angle looks like. Um, that way we have our right triangle. 
Let's go ahead and get a coordinate axis system going on here. Nice. All right, so our point uh, looks like it's at negative two, negative square root of two. So I'm going this direction, negative two, and then down, negative square root of two. So at least I know this guy is at it too. This guy is going to be less than one, but I'm not really sure. Well, actually, a little bit bigger than one, a little bit bigger. So out there somewhere. All right, now let's go ahead and draw the ray that goes through that. Now I think you can see that right triangle hiding in the background. Let's go ahead and mark it out. So you can see that we're in relation to that x-axis. Looks great. Uh, just to make things a little bit more clear, I'm going to go ahead and draw out just a little right triangle so we can better see it here. This is really what I'm working with. Uh, and I'm also going to mark out the sides of this. So we went in this direction negative two, so I know that side. We went down negative square root of two, and now we need to figure out what is this hypotenuse. Nice, okay. So let's go ahead and start off with that hypotenuse, see what we get. Uh, so I have this side, negative two squared, negative square root of two squared equals r squared. Uh, negative times negative will give me a positive four. Negative times negative will also give me a positive. Uh, square root times the square root, this will be just two. So it looks like I get six is equal to r squared, or I can just say that this guy is the square root of six. All right, so now we have all three sides. Let's get into those trigonometric functions. Starting off with sine of the angle, and the angle is right there. So opposite over hypotenuse, negative square root of two all over the square root of six. Now, it's not very pretty looking with all those square roots in there, uh, but technically that is the value of sine. Now, just as a word of warning, uh, a lot of instructors will want you to rationalize denominators, so we're gonna do that here as well. That way we get lots of good practice. Uh, I'm gonna multiply the top and bottom by the square root of six. Let's see what that gets us. So negative square root of 12 on top, uh, six on the bottom. Looks like the top reduces, there's a four times three, that'll give us a 12. So negative two square root of three all over six. And now let's go ahead and cancel out the uh, two. So negative square root of three all over three. There's my value for sine. Okay, that looks pretty good. On to cosine. Cosine will take my adjacent side over the hypotenuse. So negative two all over the square root of six. Like before, we better rationalize this thing so we don't get in trouble. So negative two times the square root of six all over six. And it looks like this guy reduces to negative square root of six all over three. So that one's good too. Moving on to tangent. This will, uh, let's see, opposite over adjacent. So negative square root of two all over negative two. Uh, oh good, not a whole lot to cancel here, just a couple of negative signs. So this will be the square root of two all over two. So there's our first tr three trigonometric functions. Now, like I mentioned before, the, the next three are almost freebies. All you gotta do is flip over the first three, find their reciprocals, and then you're good to go. Uh, looks like we'll still have to do some rationalizing of the denominator, but that's okay. Uh, so flipping this guy over, we'll get uh, negative three over the square root of three. Okay, so let's rationalize that. Multiplying top and bottom by the square root of three. Let's see, canceling out that extra three, so negative square root of three, there's that value. Okay, flipping over the next one, uh, if I flip this guy over, I'm gonna have to rationalize that denominator, uh, but if I work with the original sides, it looks like I won't have to flip over every, anything. So this is just square root of six all over negative two. That guy's done. All right, one more to go. Uh, cotangent is two all over the square root of two, so I flip that guy over. Rationalize that denominator. Cancel out some extra twos. Square root of two. And now this guy is done. So we have uh, one, two, three, four, five, six different trigonometric values. 
Now there is some uh, special things you want to be aware of when doing this. So I have one last example for us to look at uh, and really think about when it comes to those trigonometric values. So imagine going through uh, one like this and really starting off like the other ones. You know, you start off just sketching out uh, what this angle should look like. This one goes through the point 0, negative 1. So we're not going anywhere on the x-axis, but we are going down to negative 1. Now, in the next step, we'd go ahead and look at the right triangle that this forms, but unfortunately, it's right on one of our coordinate axes. There is no right triangle hiding in there, so what do we do? It's like all smushed up on there. Um, well, in cases like this, or you can really think of it as a special case, um, there is no right triangle, but you can still find values for some of the trigonometric functions. Here's how you can do that. For values like sine of the angle, you want to really think of how far out you went in just the y direction. Because it's like our y direction, that side of the triangle is still there, and actually it's the same value as our hypotenuse. Both of them have just been kind of, you know, like flattened until they're completely one. Um, maybe a good visualization is something like this, you know, maybe that's my triangle, but I'm squeezing it closer and closer to the uh, y-axis, it's getting thinner and thinner until it's just a single line, and the hypotenuse and the, the opposite are exactly the same. So anyway, we're just going to take whatever value that is, um, in this case, negative 1 over 1, value of sine is negative 1. All right, cosine. Cosine is the adjacent side over the hypotenuse. The length of the adjacent side is zero right now. It has no length. And the hypotenuse is just one. So we get a value of zero. And one more. Tangent of our angle. So this is our y value, which is, uh, let's see, what is our y value? Negative one divided by our adjacent value, zero. Now, that's a big problem in this case. We can't divide by zero. Because of that zero on the bottom, we say that the value of tangent does not exist. So even though I'm not really forming a right triangle in here, you do want to think of uh, the sides that are involved in here and still figure out their values. All right, I still have three more trigonometric functions to go, so let's go ahead and wrap those up. Cosecant, secant, and cotangent. Some of these we can flip over, some of them we can't. Let's see which ones we can do. So let's see. This is just negative uh, 1 over 1, flipped it over, still negative 1. If I flip this over, I'll get that 0 on the bottom. That's no good, so secant does not exist. And one last one, we have cotangent. That one I can flip over. In which case, I simply get zero. So watch out for special cases like that where you don't really get a right triangle, but you can still uh, form uh, the different values. Uh, just be careful on where that zero ends up so you know which values exist and which ones don't exist. All right? If you'd like to see some more videos, please visit MySecretMathTutor.com. Hey, did you notice that really cool tool I was using to uh, go ahead and make my graphs? This is something you can uh, pick up. It's a really handy thing. You can get it from easygraphing.com. And it's essentially a case for your calculator that has a nice coordinate axis built into it. Now, in addition to that, it also has some of the basic uh, functions engraved in it. So in case you need a quick reference, you can see what they are. It's a really handy tool when you want to do graphing. And actually, not that expensive. I love to keep mine on my calculator. Uh, definitely go check them out. they got some great things. That way you'll be prepared for when school starts.